Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be The Lone Ranger. Original air dates November 24th, 1943, and the title is Raven's Downfall. Hope you enjoy, and thanks for listening. horse for the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. following the gold rush, many men in California rose to fabulous heights of wealth and power. One of these was Arnold Gerson, whose wealth reached out to develop the vast resources of the Far West. Unlike the thousands of gold seekers, adventurers, and parasites who sought to grab only what they could hold in their hands, Arnold Gerson was in the Far West to stay. Gerson saw the growing influx of the disreputable element and knew that they could and would destroy what he and others like him had wrested from this land of promise. He decided to strike at the heart, the infamous Barbary Coast. In an effort to stamp out the viciousness, Garrison sought for and found the Lone Ranger. This masked rider of mystery, though reluctant to leave the plains and mountains of the cattle country, answered the call and soon found himself fighting a new type of criminal in the Barbary Coast. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the pass come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Faster, boy, faster. I'll Silver. Boy. Greg Raven was in his office. The man with him was small and thin. To set off his gaudy clothes, he wore a flashy pin of imitation diamonds set in the shape of a horseshoe in his necktie. His derby hat was cocked forward at a jaunty angle. The office door was locked. Now then, Flesh, I gotta go over these figures. Figures? Sure thing, Raven. Figures is where I shine. Only no amount of juggling the figures is gonna change the facts. You gotta do more and add up your losses. You gotta take action, see? And fast action. What do you mean? I mean the dough ain't there. You're flat. Oh, well, where's the money gone? <laughs> dished it out. You dished it out in bag fools trying to pay off the guys you hired to get the Lone Ranger. And trying to fix things for your pals who are in jail. Maybe you didn't know it, but there was a bottom to your sack of savings. Uh, I figured on a nice pile of cash the last time Shark Larson dropped anchor. I always need seamen. Pays me a flat price of 200 apiece for him. Sure. And what happened the last time he was here? Huh, you know what happened. Before he got ready to sail, a lot of your pals were on board Larson's boat. Mr. Larson had to get out in the night and fast. He shanghaied your pals. You didn't get paid a dime. And who's to blame for that? <laughs> the Lone Ranger again. You need some quick money, huh? Yeah. I sent Manny out to meet a certain man. He'll be here in a little while. Maybe he'll have something to report. Manning, huh? You know who he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a smooth talker. Slick lawyer, too. What's he trying to do? Flash, 
A lot of rich, important guys around here in San Francisco. I knew some of them when they weren't so rich. I know things about them that they wouldn't like to have generally known. Yeah, I know. Had to pay me off a couple of times when I was up against it. Got together and appointed a representative. Well, Manning's gone to meet him again. For what? Wait till you see. Should have thought of using those guys sooner. Hey, who's that? Take it easy. It's probably Manning. Who's there? Open it up, please. Manning. Come in, Manning. You know Flash? Yes. Hello, Flash. Hi, dude. Not many people in the cafe, is there, Raven? Ah, never mind. Tell me what I already know. Tell me something I don't know. See the lawyer? Yes, yes, sir. Well, let's have it. Is the Lone Ranger all through? No, he isn't all through, Raven. Now, look, Manning. I told you to tell those big guys that I wanted the Lone Ranger sent away from here. Jailed for carrying guns or something. I know. Well, why didn't they do it? Raven... Do you happen to know anything about Arnold Gerson? I know who he is. Uh, he's one of the Knob Hill swells. Anything about his past? Oh, he's one of the big guys I don't have something on. Well, that's too bad. He's the one that brought the Lone Ranger here. I know that. He's the only one that could call him off. If he could be called off. The Lone Ranger's on his own now. I doubt if he can be stopped. You mean to say that with all the influence those men have, they can't get the Lone Ranger out of my way? No, nope, they can't. Well, they can't treat me like this. They've got to help me. They don't. I'll squeal. I'll tell all I know about them. I'll talk till you'll hear some mighty funny noises coming from Knob Hill. Now, if you could get some quick cash. That's what I need, cash and quick cash. I've got to get enough to hire the right men to kill the Lone Ranger with no more beating around the bush. Manning, what's that you got? Oh, this is a newspaper. A man stopped you outside and handed it to me. Said to give it to you. What do you look like? Well dressed, tall, had a beard. This is the edition that comes on sale tomorrow. I'll throw it away. I don't want it. Got other things to think of. Wait, listen to this. What? To the Lone Ranger. An open letter. Uh, what's that mean? It's a letter to the Lone Ranger. Listen to this. For what you have done in the suppression of crime and the apprehension of the most vicious type of criminal during these past few weeks, the people of San Francisco thank you. We feel that we are already under an obligation to you that is too great for us to hope to repay. But the root of evil still remains. Your work has pruned the full-blown blossoms from the tree of crime. You have nipped the buds by closing many dives where new crimes might fester. You have done work that will do much to rid our fair city of its blight. But the root remains... Mask man, this is a plea from the citizens of California. It is a most fervent plea that you not leave us with Drake Raven sitting like a spider in his web, like an octopus with s- sucking tentacles ever ready to reach out once more. Uh, give me that paper. I'll cram this down the editor's throat. I'll make him eat those Raven. words. Raven, open the door. I've got news for you. Yeah, that's Chip. Open the door for Well, what is it? The Virginia Bell has been sighted. She's putting into the bay. She'll be dropping anchor before morning. That means that the skipper will need men, a new crew. Good. What does that mean? It means cash. Go get the boys together, Chip. Tell them to stir things up. Flash, you go outside and get some customers in this place. We've got to get a whole new crew for the Virginia Bell. Okay, Raven. We'll get the quick cash for a crew and then take care of the other things later on. <laughs> It's the Raven's Roost, folks. Come right on in and see the big show. It's constantly varied entertainment of the highest order. Replete with fun and frolic. Come in and make a night of it. It's a show that's sharp as a razor's wit and no back number. Come on in. Come one, come all. Come right in, folks. The Raven's Roost is the place for a big time tonight. Knob Hill, a community of millionaire mansions, a 50-cent hack ride from the Barbary Coast, but a thousand miles away by any other standard. That was where Arnold Gerson lived. Oh, Obes. This is where Mr. Gerson lives, sir. Oh, thank you. That'll be 50 cents. All right. Here you are. Thanks, mister. Yeah. The well-dressed man who alighted from the cab had been to Gerson's home on several previous occasions. 
Sometimes he went as a gentleman patron of the arts, dressed in perfectly fitting clothes and wearing a beard. He used the front door. Mr. Gerson is expecting me. Yes, sir. He's in the library. At other times, this same man wore far different clothes. He wore two guns, and his face was covered by a mask. He was then the Lone Ranger, and he came without the knowledge of the servants by means of a window in Gerson's library. A gentleman to see you, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you. Gerson, I just came from Pacific Street, over the outside of Raven's place. I sent him one of the advanced copies of tomorrow's paper. I wanted him to see that the Virginia Bell were due to arrive. Yes, I saw tomorrow's paper. <laughs> Raven will see more than shipping news. And I've got to get into my own clothes. Are they in the closet? Oh, right there where you left them. Good. Is uh, Tato still in back? He's still there, waiting for you with the horses. What are you going to do? You think Raven saw the announcement on the Virginia Bell? Along Pacific Street, but it was coming in. I even know that now. Well, the captain deals with Drake Raven. He carries a crew of victims of Raven's Shanghai business. As soon as the news of Virginia Bell's arrival reached Drake Raven, a man out front to attract a crowd. Yes, looking for victims, the fiend. Before morning, a score of poor devils will have been dropped to the cellars beneath the Raven's roost and then taken to the Virginia Bell to slavery. Well, as soon as I get my hat and gun belt, I'll be ready. You certainly made a quick change from boots to mask. <laughs> Well, leave the other clothes out. I'll put them away until you need them again. Well, thanks. You don't hope to prove Raven guilty of kidnapping, do you? That would be hard to prove. The way he's taken precautions, it'd be practically impossible. Do you suppose a case could be made against him by the men who come off the Virginia Bell? Only half of them were shanghaied by Drake Raven. Their testimony wouldn't mean a thing. Oh. They'd have no proof that would stand up in court. Very well. Are you going to try and catch Raven's hired men as they shanghai a new crew for the Virginia Bell? Uh, it wouldn't do any good. You couldn't prove that the men were hired by Raven? No, I'm not going to fight him that way. Well, what are you going to do? I'm going to try and make Drake Raven get away from here. And go so far that he'll never get back to the Barbary Coast. Oh. I've got to meet Tonto and get to the sea coast as soon as I can. I haven't much time. But what about the men whom Raven will shanghai? I'll do what we can about them. Close the window, will you, Mr. Gerson? Uh, yes, yes, of course, but I don't... Uh, you'll hear from me. Tonto. Uh, he come. Here's Silver already. Thanks, Kimosabi. Sit in, big fella. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. The Lone Ranger and Tonto raced down from Knob Hill. They skirted the city to avoid the populated sections and reached the waterfront some distance from the Barbary Coast. Right up here, Tonto. Who's Silver? Who's Silver? What we do here? Can you see a faint light away off there? Ah. Me see it. That's the Virginia Bell. She's coming in to anchor. Me know. As soon as she's dropped anchor, the runners will be on the job. I want to get down to where the runners' boats are tied. I will lead the horses steady, big fella. Uh -huh. We'll have to examine the boats as we follow the shore. Um, what runners do? Well, I'll explain just what the runners are, Tonto. They're a group of men who are probably as treacherous and dangerous as any in the Barbary Coast. They have small boats and they meet incoming ships. They take blackjacks and guns, cheap liquor, and ropes along with them. Oh, what they do? These runners represent various owners of boarding houses and cafes. They go on board the ship and offer to take the sailors ashore. Oh, why take rope and blackjack? In case the sailor doesn't want to go with them, they use force. When the oh. sailor's delivered to some place of amusement, he's generally allowed to stay just long enough to lose his money. At times, it amounts to a year's pay. Oh, sailor, plenty fool. I know when a ship like the Virginia Bell puts in, nearly all members of the crew are men who were Shanghai to start with. They're so eager to get off the boat, they'll take a chance on anything. Mm, I'm not one to make second voyage, huh? <laughs> There's been any risk to avoid that. Oh, here. There's one of the runner's boats. We'll fix it so it won't be much good to... Give me your axe. Ah, uh, you smash boat? Not entirely. We'll loosen the seams so it'll fill with water soon after it's put out. Uh, your axe. Oh, thanks. I want to fix most of the boats like this. <laughs> Boat leak water now. That'll fix it. Now well, we'll find some more of them. Boat over here, little way. Good. Keep your eyes open. If you see any of the runners coming here, let me know. I don't want them to know who's doing this. Oh, me watch. I'll have this one fixed in a minute. There. Uh, not fix all boats? I'm going to leave the two largest untouched. Oh. And then we'll see what happens. The 
curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story, before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to continue our story. The Lone Ranger, knowing that the runners from the Barbary Coast would be going to meet the incoming Virginia Bell, sprung leaks in all but the two largest boats. It was nearly daybreak when the sailing vessel finally dropped anchor in the bay. Greg Raven was on the shore with two of his companions. Three watched the Virginia Bell. I'll get this straight. A lot of men on board that boat are men I supplied. Yeah, we know it, Raven. You two will be putting out in your boats to meet them. Don't bring any of those men to my place. You understand? Sure, we understand. Take them to Big Bert's. He'll take care of them. Sure. Big Bert always pays us for any customers we take him. You both got men to handle your oars? Well, I have. How about you, Beef? My boys are set to shove off. Well, we might as well get started then. I'll see you later, boys. Yep. Remember, I don't want anyone from the Virginia Bell. We savvy. I'll meet Captain Ritter later on and see what he wants in the way of a new crew. Come on, Beef. Let's get on our boats. Look, there's the runners from Texas Mag's boarding house. They're putting out. Yeah, but we can beat them, though. I guess all of the runners are on the job now. There's a lot of competition these days. Hey, what boat's that one over there? Yeah, the Grizzly Bear Hotel. There's a boat looking for customers for the Blue Anchor. All right, boys, we'll shove off now. See if you can beat all those other lovers to the rail of the Virginia Bell. Got all your supplies? Shove off! <laughs> The man called Beef was offshore with his crew bending to the oars. A moment later, the other friend of Drake Raven, whose boat was larger than the others, also shoved off and pointed toward the Virginia Bell. There were a dozen boats in the water, each hoping to get a share of the sailors with money in their pockets. Back in the shadows, the masked man and Tonto stood near old piling and watched. Look, Tonto, the first of the boats we fixed is coming back to shore. Oh, plenty low in water, too. There are the one with bad leak. <laughs> Hellers plenty mad. Then. Those men don't do what I expect them to. I'll have a few words to say to help them along. First one, touch shore now. Hellers get out. Drag her up to the beach. I'll soak the skin. What the thunder happened? Why didn't you check the boat first? All right, say the talk and drag her out. All right. Here. Here. What's going on? What's happening to your boat? Is she leaking too? Yeah. Yours got a leak? Yeah. How about yours? I don't know what happened. It was all right a while ago. I thought someone done this a purpose. Let uh, me see. I was just going to look myself. Pull that lantern down here, Slim. Right, Pete. What's it look like, Pete? Hey, take a look. What's it look like to you? Why, Thunder, this was done with an axe. Better see if your boat's the same. Hey, look yonder. Two of the other boys are putting back to shore. Boys, someone done this to us on purpose. We're going to find out who and why. Come on, come on. Otto, they're comparing notes now. They're learning that every one of those boats was attacked with an axe. Uh, well, that's all plenty mad. One of them is pointing to the larger boats. See? It ain't hard to figure who done this. It's the lovers that didn't have no trouble. Both of them are Greg Raven's pals. It's working out, Otto. Boys, this is against our rules. They can't get away with it. They won't get away with it. Just stay right here, boys. Those two get back. We'll show them. The two large boats, each requiring several men at the oars, came alongside the Virginia Bell as day was breaking. Beef and Raven's other friend, called Scar, found little trouble in persuading most members of the crew to go ashore. Plenty of fun, boys, and good liquor and pretty dancing girls. You don't need to persuade me. Just let me get into that boat. Me too. I've had enough sailing to do me for life. Yeah, what's the matter, boys? Don't you like Captain Ritter? That man should be in irons. He's no ship's captain. He's a slave man. Come on, Hank. Let's get into the small boat while there's a sea. Who else is going ashore? Make room for me. I'm going ashore. Me too. Well, will those two boats hold us all? Don't crowd. Quit trouble, man. Plenty of room, boys. Just take your turn. I'll show you all where to have some fun on shore. <laughs> Sure will be good to hit dry land. No more sailing for me. I want Drake Raven. Just let me get my hands on that rat. Boys, pull us over near the other boat. I want to talk to Scar. Okay, mister. As soon as we're ashore, I want to see Drake Raven. We'll escort you boys to where you can have some fun. Hey, Scar, bring your boat near mine. We're the only boat to put out. 
Something happened to all the others. See him on the shore? What are you making, my chief? I don't know. What are you? Something must have gone wrong. I don't figure it out. Hey, one of them fellas there is shaking his fist at us. Yeah, I see him. Wait till I get the megaphone. I'll call out. Maybe something went wrong, but I don't know what it could be. Ahoy there on shore! What's up? Hank's got a megaphone. He's going to answer back. What's he say about scuttling them? See if those boys are sure mad about something. Uh, someone fired a shot. Hey! Lay off! I'm sure ready to fight. Chief, you hit them? They want to fight, do they? Avast, are you filled rats? Boys, we got a row on our hands. So as soon as you hit the shore, get out your knives and guns and clubs. <laughs> At the boats near the shore, the angry exchange of yells increased. Beef and Scar realized that they were accused of opening the seams in the other boats. Raging mad at the unjust charges, they were determined to fight to a finish. The boats touched shore. Passengers were forgotten as the men dropped their oars, grabbed knives and clubs, and leaped into the shallow water. Hit them, boys! Oh, what happens to double-crossing scuttlers? Take your men in, Scar! Let them have it! The fight was a furious one. The clamor reached others who came to see, then stayed to take sides. In a few moments, half a hundred men were engaged. While the fight proceeded, the sailors from Virginia Bell drew apart, wanting no portion of the fierce battle. There was a masked man who quickly moved in among them. Hurry, over there. You're the doc. Hey, you're masked. Get over there. I want men who would like to get square with Drake Raven. Not on me. You, Raven Shanghai, you? Uh, me? Yes. But what's that mask for? Who are you? There's where you belong. Get all the men who want Drake Raven. Get them together. Hey, boys, we're going to get Greg Raven. Get the rest of the ones that want him. Long before the battle ended, a dozen men with a grudge against Greg Raven were herded together and moved quickly from the scene of conflict on the shore. The Lone Ranger addressed those men with a few well-chosen words. In the meantime, Greg Raven was in his office with Manning. Well, it's daylight out. Guess the runners are all through by now. How about the men in the cellar, Raven? Well, we got our share of them. Got a record of 20 that were knocked out during the evening. Figure I can sell all 20 to Captain Ritter. That'll represent a little cash. Yep. <sighs> and I'm going to get some sleep now. Yes, the boys will take care of things till tonight. And the men below? They'll keep. They sleep off the drug, they'll get some more. We'll keep until I make a deal with the captain. Figure the runners will have taken most of Ritter's crew. Have to get all new men. Well, I'll be around tonight, then. All right, Manning. Raven, Raven, open it fast! What's the matter with Flash? Raven, you should hear the report. What report? A mob fight on the shore. What? Yeah, it's the runners. All the boats sprung leaks but beef and scars. They're the only ones that got any customers from the Virginia Bell. And when they touched shore, the rest of the runners was laying for him. And oh, what a row. Raven, beef and scar were your men, you didn't have them skittle any of the boats, did you? Ah, of course not. Do you think I'm crazy? Oh, that busted cold. It would be suicide. Yeah, it's the same as. Everyone thinks Beef and Scar open the seams in the other boats. That's why the riot. You better do something quick. Did Beef and Scar take the sailors off the Virginia Bell? Yeah, they got all of them. That's why the riot started. You better get... Don't move. You. Yes, man. Holy smoke. The Lone Ranger. You got a nerve coming here? Not nearly the nerve you'll have if you stay here, Raven. You're through. Like fun I am, I'll so... Don't try to throw another knife. What's shooting? You two. Get over there against the wall. Wait, I've done nothing. Get over there. One minute. You two, Manning. Have anything to say? Stay it from that wall. By any chance, do you know something about the fight on the beach? I know all about it. That's what I thought. So you started it. You opened the seams in the boats, and I'll be blamed for it. That's only a small difficulty, Raven. You know what men served as a crew on the Virginia Bell? What men? Men whom you shanghaied. Men whom you sent into slavery. Men who have for months past felt the lash of Captain Ritter. Men who would kill you with their bare hands if they could get you. Now, wait. There's no evidence against Raven. You can't prove it That's yet. right, Manning. I can't prove anything. That's why Raven stayed out of jail. Not one of those sailors can prove that Raven shanghaied him. But they all know it. They aren't concerned with proof that will stand up in court. Now they're taking the law into their own hands. Listen. Hey, boss, they're all at the outside door. Let them in, Toto. No, don't let them in here. Don't let them at me. There he is. There's Raven. We'll get you, Raven. Get back there. Get back. Hey, please, let me out of here. Let me get through the trap door. Let me get away. That's all I ask. Where can you go? Everyone on the Barbary Coast thinks you're the one that had those runner boats scuttled. Even your own man, Beef and Scar, might suspect you. 
They'll hold you responsible for all the injuries to their men. Oh, look, you gotta give me a chance. I don't want to die. Those men will tear me apart. You bet they will if they can get you. What do you want? Name it. Anything you say, you win, I admit you've got me. Manning, yes. open that trap door. Busy. There's your tunnel, Raven. It leads to the shore. They're smashing down the door. They'll be in here in a minute. Start now, Raven. Maybe you can save your life if you keep going. Yeah. I'm giving you a chance to escape. But if you ever come back to Barbary no, Coast... No, I'll never come back. Close the trap door. Manning, you better attend to the unconscious men below. And if you sell them into slavery, you'll get worse than Raven. I'll see that ten minutes since they sleep on the Where is he? Let us out of him. Raven. No, not Raven. me, boys. Not me. Wait. Wait. Steady there, men. Men, Raven is gone. By this time, he's reached the shore. You can't find him now. But Drake Raven will never return to the Barbary Coast. Tano's waiting for me, Gerson. We want to get back to our camp. And Drake Raven is gone. The whole of the Barbary Coast defies him to return. There is none more dead than the king whose people rise against him. I think this is a more bitter end for Drake Raven than prison would have been. The last I heard of him, he found a small boat and put off into the bay. The rest of the Barbary Coast will fall very quickly now that the leader is gone. I think we'll have very little trouble with the less important figures. The end of our war is in sight. Well, I'll see you again. If I hear from Dan, there'll be a lamp lighted in the tower. I'll be watching for it. Hey, big fella. Come on, Silver. Get him up. Come on, Silver. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Join in the conversation by going to otrwesterns.com slash Discord. And don't forget to send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. This episode is copyright under the attribution, not commercial, share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and again, thanks for listening.